Hey everybody, welcome to the middle of nowhere. Today we're going to be doing a couple of things with this B550F gaming motherboard from ASUS. We're going to be doing a BIOS flashback, I'm going to show you how to do that. And then secondly, we're going to go ahead and take a nice tour of the BIOS. By no means is this an overclock guide, it's really, again, just a tour of the BIOS for those interested, especially those new to custom PC building. This BIOS for the ROG series is fairly similar to other ROG boards, so you, this should be helpful even if you don't have the B550F gaming. I'm going to go over on how to set the XMP within the BIOS, how to enable PBO2 or Precision Boost Overdrive 2, which is available with Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, and some of the other nifty features within the BIOS that you might want to tinker with. So come along with me and let's go ahead and do the BIOS flashback. Now the neat thing about the BIOS flashback on any motherboard that has that button right here on the rear I.O. and the dedicated BIOS flashback USB slot is you don't even need a CPU or RAM. Having said that, make sure you consult your manual if you do not have this particular motherboard or an ASUS motherboard as it may vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. All you need is a USB drive, to you need to plug in your 24 pin power connector from your PSU as well as the CPU power connector and right here I just have the 8 pin plugged in. After that you need again to have that nice USB drive. Uh, size does not matter, you could probably go as low as a 2 gig drive, the BIOSes generally aren't larger than a few hundred megs. Um, do format it in FAT32. Any other formatting will not work. So download your file, again go to your respective motherboards, support page, get the latest BIOS, uh, avoid beta, I wouldn't really touch those, just get the official BIOSes, install it, do anything you have to do with the BIOS. Uh, for ASUS you have to use a .exe to rename it. It's really simple, self-explanatory. Once you have the BIOS installed or copied over to your USB flash drive, you're going to plug it in to the appropriate slot. Doing this one-handed is difficult. There you go. So you see that. And then we'll turn on the power supply and we'll press this button for a few seconds. Now I'm going to go ahead and magically cut. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the power supply here. We have power, as you can see by the lighting. Then I'm going to go ahead and hold the BIOS button right here for about three to five seconds. There should be a little light, um, it's right above the button that will start blinking. Then it takes about 10 15 minutes for everything to resolve. So we'll go ahead and hit that button. All right, there it is blinking slowly. If it uh, goes solid or anything like that, you can even see the drive being red, then that means you might have a problem. Once this light turns off, then uh, you have successfully installed your new BIOS. So we'll go ahead and run a clock and see how long this takes. Hopefully you can actually see that blinking. I'm going to lower this. Yep, yeah you can. All right, good. All right, so the magic of fast forwarding. And we're back. And as you can see by the stopwatch, it only took four minutes and 30 seconds, almost 4.31 really didn't take any time at all. I just sat here the whole time uh, and the light that was right here, it just blinked the whole time and then once it was done, it stopped. So after that, um, if you don't have any issues, then you can go ahead and turn the power off. I would recommend unplugging all the power cables and then you can go ahead and install your components and set up your uh, computer. However, I would definitely recommend kind of set it like I have it set up here, put everything together, turn it on before you put everything in the case. That way you can make sure everything works. So after spamming your delete key upon initial boot of your new computer, you'll get to the easy mode version of the BIOS. If you've already gone into your BIOS and actually have gone into advanced mode, you're gonna stay in advanced mode and to get back to easy mode, you're just going, or toggle back and forth really, you're just gonna hit F7. The BIOS can be navigated both with your mouse, if it works, and mostly the keyboard. Um, I'll be doing a combination of the two. There's really only three things required of you to get into the BIOS with a Ryzen 3000 series CPU and also with RTX uh, 3000 series cards or even um, AMD cards and it's as follows. To set your XMP profile for your RAM or DOCP as it's called for AMD, to set the resizable bar and turn it on for your GPU and then finally to turn on PBO2 or Precision Boost Overdrive 2. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through those first and then cover the rest of the BIOS. 
And again, this is not an overclocker's guide. It is just a tour of the BIOS for the B550F gaming, and this will be applicable to most ROG AMD motherboards. For Intel, it's gonna be quite a bit different. Or, well, there'll be similarities, but there'll be a lot of differences as well. So we're in the easy mode, and we wanna set our XMP profile for our RAM. Again, this is called DOCP within AMD's world. Uh, so this is how we get to our DDR4 3600 CL18 speeds. On the easy mode screen, you're gonna see a lot of basic information. You're gonna see the motherboard, the BIOS version that you have, the CPU, its speed, the amount of memory you have, the uh, slots that it's installed in, the speeds that it's at, its default speed is 2666. Then again, you have that XMP profile or DOCP, the fans and their speeds, and here you can go ahead and set Q control if you want the voltage for your CPU and the temperature, some overclocking stuff, as well as your boot priority, which you can also set. Uh, I believe this is like a drag and drop. So if you have multiple drives here, the top equals first drive booted. Okay, so we've set our D, uh, DOCP. Now let's go ahead and set our resizable bar. This is here, we'll just go to on. Next, we need to get it to PBO2 and that's in advanced mode. So F7, we get to advanced mode. We should start off at the main menu. Again, a lot of the same information that you saw in easy mode, BIOS, when it was built, the CPU that you have, its speed, the amount of RAM, its speed, date and time, and that can also be found here. Additionally, you have some other things where you can set the language, the date, and the system time, but you can also do that kind of up here and within easy mode. Then there's security. Um, this allows you to create passwords for either getting into the BIOS or actually in Windows, I'm not 100% sure. It makes sense if it was within the BIOS since you're in the BIOS. So we'll just go ahead and go back to the main. All right, skipping AI Tweaker, ignoring these four for now. To set PBO2, you go to Advance. You have a whole bunch of options here, and this can be kind of confusing. We are going to scroll down to AMD Overclocking, hit Enter. We're going to not read this and just hit Accept. Then we're going to go to Precision Boost Overdrive. It's on auto. We want to make sure that that's enabled. Um, but we're also gonna see what advanced means. Okay, so this lets you get into the, to tweaking what that means and I'm not gonna touch that. We're just gonna go ahead and enable it. Now, for those of you who don't know what Precision Boost Overdrive 2, here's a description. Asus is kind enough to give you some of that. What this allows is it allows your processor to run at higher speeds that are the speeds that are advertised for longer. So it might draw a bit more power, a bit more voltage, but it's gonna allow you to hit that higher clock speed that's advertised on the box, that the boost speed, and for longer. So that's why you want to enable it. If you have a cooling system that can handle that, then enable it. If you're stuck with a default cooler, you should be okay, but um, you might wanna definitely monitor your temps after that. Okay, so those are our three things. XMP, a resizable bar, precision boost overdrive. Too. So there we go. If you that's all you want to do, then all you have to do is hit exit, save changes and reset. And in fact, we'll go ahead and do that now. You'll get a, a summary of all the things that you did. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And we're going to go back into BIOS. We're going to spam this again. And you'll see that the changes have taken effect. So I'm just going to spam it. Because if, if, if it's too quick, then you're not going to even, like you'll see the little Asus eye and then you'll go right into Windows. So you want to just go ahead and preemptively spam. Okay, so right here we can see that our memory is set to the 3600s. Um, voltage, sure. Uh, our speed, that's still the same because that is default. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So now let's go into the rest of the BIOS tour. One of the things I kind of just glossed over because I, for whatever reason, didn't see it uh, because it was to the left of main is my favorites. This allows you to mess with your RAM frequency, the voltage, lets you do SATA drive configuration. Um, so if you have any multiple drives, you can do what you need to do there. Um, for hot plug, you can set up hot plug. That's cool. So this motherboard supports it. Let's see here. What else we got? Onboard device communication. Okay, this allows you to set the speed of your PCI Express slots. So I wonder if you can set this, if you, yep. So you can set the Gen 3 if you need to for whatever reason. So let's say you're using a PCI riser cable and PCI 4 riser cable, e riser cables are very rare. 
So you're more than likely gonna have a Gen 3 one. That's probably what you would need to do there. Uh, all GPUs, even if they're PCIe 4.0, can exist in PCIe 3, 2, or even 1. Um, you can do bifurcation. So what this means is it allows uh, you to split the bandwidth of that first slot, which is again a by 16 by 16 lane slot. So if you have another PCI card in there that needs some lanes, this will allow it to split that off. We have auto mode, which means it should do it automatically. Uh, what else can we do here? My favorites. So we have post delay time. So I think that means how quick, uh, you, how much time you are given to actually get into the BIOS. So that's always good. Fast boot. Uh, or normal boot. This determines how fast you get from the uh, post into Windows. So fast boot means again you'll have less time to get uh, to the BIOS by spamming delete key. Okay, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. What we got here? CSM compatibility support module. No clue what that even does. Uh, da -da. Yep, no idea. So anyway, there's that. So that's something you might want to look up as well if you need it. Next up is AI Tweaker. This is where you're going to get into the, I want to overclock on my own. I want to set everything manually, da 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 da. You'll be able to tweak your, ma your RAM here, your CPU frequency, and set all the voltages as well. You can even get so far as to go into the CCXs if you want. Um, again, I'm not touching any of this because I don't know what it really means. And I've yet to find a good overclocking video and I've already decided I'm not gonna actually overclock because I don't want my work computer to be at risk of having a shorter lifespan. But if you are into that and you wanna get as much performance as you can out of your system, this is where you're gonna do it in AI Tweaker and uh, definitely find some tutorials. I wish Asus would provide their own. I mean, they, they build such a robust BIOS for it that uh, instructions would be fantastic. Because <laughs> I have a lot of feeling that a lot of those, the tweaks that you would make would would uh, apply to almost all the CPUs within a given series. So you can set voltages, you can set, um, we should see our RAM voltage already set. Yep, there it is, 1.35 volts. But if I was gonna do this automatically, or uh, manually rather, so I would scroll up top, here's DOCP. We would change that, oops, sorry, right here, to manual. So now we get some extra, uh, items let's say i want to go to 4000 i'm not going to save any of this by the way i'm just doing it hypothetically go to 4000 okay we're good and we're going to go to our voltage where'd you go there's our ram voltage set already there it is okay it's already set this might need to go a little higher to achieve those frequencies then you're going to go into the dr dram timing control this is where things get fun to achieve higher speeds you're more than likely going to have to loosen up the timings and what i mean by loosen is make these numbers bigger. So that might need to go to 22, that, or something like that. This might need to go to, I don't know. We'll just go, I'm just doing random numbers. Again, I'm not saving any of this. As long as you don't save it, you're not screwing everything up. And even if you do screw something up and you can't get the system to post, you can clear CMOS and it'll reset everything to factory default. You might want to undervolt your CPU. I think this is where you would do it. Uh, a lot of, for whatever reason, Zen processors like to suck down the voltage and they don't necessarily need to. You can actually undervolt and they'll get just as good performance with, with less heat. There are guides on that, so definitely Google that if you're interested in that. Um, there's, there's so much going on in here, it's not even funny. And you also might have seen Precision Boost Overdrive here. For whatever reason, Asus has made um, the option to turn it on in two places, but where I showed you in advance, that's where you actually want to turn it on. So don't do it in AI Tweaker, do it in advance. AI Tweaker, that's where you're going to do all the tweaking, the changes and getting the most out of your system. You have a whole bunch of configurations that you can do here. This is also where you'll enable the firmware TPM for your CPU, or if you have a different motherboard and you have a physical TPM module, you'll see uh, right underneath that or above it, I can't quite remember, um, but you can check out my TPM video if you want. Uh, I go over the basics. Uh, of what a TPM is and can do and also BitLocker stuff. But here is where you can enable it. To run Windows 11, you need a TPM and or, I'm not sure if it's both, you need a secure boot. So you can go ahead and enable uh, firmware TPM if you want, and that will let you get Windows uh, 11 installed. You also have some CPU stuff here. Again, a lot of these things, I have no idea what they are. There's some nice, short, concise descriptions that may help you if you're into tinkering. Um, but yeah, so you can go in there and look at it. You have your HDD smart information. 
so nothing's there. Um, NVMe configuration. So we have one NVMe drive. We can do self-test, controller-only test, run the device test. I don't even know what that is. Oh, okay, cool. It passed. <laughs> Good. Um, so yeah, so we have that. What else we have? USB PCI subsystems. So this, if you need to, um, I want to say uh, resizable, yeah, resizable bar support again. So we'll leave that auto. 4G decoding. Device decoded. Uh, this might be for mining and you need that enabled if you're into mining. Don't quote me on that again, 100%, but I think that's what that's for. AMD PBS, what's that do? Data link feature, no, okay, Thunderbolt support. So if you add an add-in card, so this motherboard has a port for Thunderbolt. You can add an add-in card. You might need to turn it on here in the BIOS. Okay, so let's go, we're done, we're, we're kind of done with this. So this is just more granular stuff. Let's go into monitoring. This allows, shows us all the sensors and temperatures as well as fan speeds. Uh, you cannot, I don't think you can actually tweak anything here. You know where, okay, so you can turn the monitors off. So let's say you have a custom water cool loop, I think, and you keep getting uh, some weird error when you boot up your machine, you would go, I think here and just click ignore because um, you technically don't have a CPU fan. Voltages, let's see if we hit enter. So that's just, again, it's just monitoring. Here's our Q fan configuration again that we saw in easy mode. So this will allow you to really tweak how your fans are done. So that's kind of cool. Q fan tuning. So this allows you how quick it's gonna ramp up and then also your different stand uh, uh, presets as well. Boot is just that, it's your configuration. You can set your option, your order. So if you have multiple hard drives um, or you need to boot off a of USB, you can come in here and be, because you can't figure out how to get to boot off USB manually via Windows or whatever, the advanced options. Uh, you can come in here and be like, I want to boot off USB first as priority so I can do what I need to do. Uh, def d additionally, you can set secure boot, turn that on if you need to. Uh, this again is that and or thing for Windows 11. Not 100% sure if you need secure boot, but you can turn it on. So you need it in Windows UEFI, UEFI mode, which is essentially what this is in the BIOS um, as opposed to like the classic BIOS. So tools, Asus Easy Flash 3 utility. This is one of my favorite tools. So again, like just when you need to update the BIOS and you might need to for more CPU or RAM support or whatever, and you don't want to have to use the BIOS flashback because you have everything installed, you'll go into the BIOS, you'll come here, you'll click on um, Easy Flash utility. You'll have had your USB drive with the new BIOS already plugged in. It can go into any USB port. It doesn't have to go into the bio dedicated BIOS flashback port. But then what you'll do is you'll, you should hopefully see your device here. You'll navigate to where that file is and then you'll update the BIOS that way. You also have secure erase if you need to erase your hard drive uh, and you don't wanna do it within Windows. User profiles, this is fantastic. This is great for overclockers. So let's say you have uh, you achieved a nice overclock and you want to save all the settings that you just did because and it might be a lot right so you'll go ahead and you can name your profile overclock one you'll name you'll save to profile one and then you will uh, save settings to profile one and then it should appear right here. And then once you exit out and save all your settings, you'll see this here. Do be aware, anytime you update your BIOS, all of these uh, disappear. It's really annoying. So what I definitely suggest that you do is you scroll down and you save to a USB drive any of your settings. That way if something catastrophic happens and you lose all this when you reset CMOS or something, uh, you'll be able to get those settings back. Again, this is fantastic for those who are doing a lot of changes within the BIOS, or if you just wanna save all the three things that you did and not deal with the hassle of going back to resizable bar, setting PBO2, and setting your XMP. That's the tour of the BIOS for the ROG Strix B550F Gaming motherboard. And this, again, will be applicable to many other motherboards from ASUS that are in the ROG line and even possibly their Tough series as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. Leave any comments or questions you have down below. I appreciate all the support and all the community feedback and interactions as of late. 
and thanks for the views and everything else. This has been a really fun time uh, with the channel and it's been growing like crazy. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll be doing a case overview slash review of the Fantex P300. I'm Seth and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.